said seven minutes to do that. It's taken us about half an hour. This is the most uncomfortable I've ever been in my life. <laughs> Me and my friend, Bew, are pretty crazy. I think if you watch my channel, you might be quite similar to us. We prefer the hard, challenging activities over the easy, comfortable things. It just leads to greater rewards. That's literally the definition of delayed gratification. The harder thing today for more rewards tomorrow. And so we wanted the ultimate challenge. What is the hardest thing that we could do? What is a risk that we can take? Something very difficult, uncomfortable and challenging. And it is wild camping in a thunderstorm. That is what we decided. So we decided to wild camp on Bamford Edge during, it wasn't really a massive thunderstorm, but it did feel massive when we were there. Uh, we had never been camping before in our adult lives. I had been somewhat in my sort of earlier years, I went in cadets, but this was with instructors and hundreds of teenagers, so it wasn't really the same. We've never been by ourselves. So in this video, I'm just gonna break down the day. I'm gonna tell you the lessons that we learned and how we felt and how it all happened. All in all, it was a good experience. My face is itchy from the midges that uh, came out the next day when we woke up and they just started biting us. One of them went into my eyeball. I swear, when I go into the outdoors, I just get things in my eyes. And one of these little flies just like flew in, literally into my eye and it just got stuck in there and I had to like try and take it out and stuff. One of them went into Bew's ear. It was a very own, <laughs> I think anyone who isn't on the same kind of vibe as me and my friend uh, would view this crazy. Like, why would you want something like this? But it's just a different lifestyle and different desires that we have. I know to a lot of people it seems weird. Why would you want to be uncomfortable? Why would you want challenges? But I think actually me saying that, me saying that sentence right then, why would you want challenges? Suddenly makes those people who think this is weird backtrack and think, oh yeah, uh, challenges are actually good for us. Like you can't have a challenge without some form of uncomfortability. And this was the ultimate challenge, the ultimate uncomfortability. <laughs> like, and that this is exactly why we did it. In the modern times, in the modern times, like especially most of my peers, we have what I call a comfort homeostasis. That literally just means that we we want to stay comfortable. It makes sense. That is, if you've got the luxuries of life, why wouldn't you want to enjoy them and stay comfortable inside of your warm home, watching Netflix, playing video games, eating junk food, doing drugs? Why wouldn't you want to do that stuff? It's ultimate pleasure. But the reason why I don't want to do that stuff is because it leads to long-term detriments. A life without challenges is not a life worth living, in my opinion. After a year period in my life of having no real challenges, well, I mean, it was a challenge, but it was still like, after a year long period of essentially overdosing on instant gratification, I realized the importance of this. I've, I've internalized the importance of this instant versus delayed gratification lifestyle. I know, at least for me, that the instant gratification lifestyle is not, it's not good. It's not an easy, comfortable life where you have no challenges, you have no hard work, isn't a good thing, in my opinion. And at least not for me, that's the times I've been able to perfectly correlate my happiness, life fulfillments, positive mental health with the times after a period of delayed gratification and the exact opposite. So bad mental health, bad fulfillment, unhappy after periods of instant gratification. This is the reason why we did it. So really, I just feel like you and I are hard people like where we want challenges we both do boxing we do weightlifting we, we do things that scare us because we know that the outcome the the rewards of that is worth it in the long term now we had one night which was extremely uncomfortable like so uncomfortable but the uncomfort is over now all we have is the positives of this night which is a story to tell for years and it's a great story. It's a great memory to have in my head. This is a night that honestly, I don't think I will ever forget unless if I get Alzheimer's, but <laughs> we're on some uneven terrain now. Whew. This is my first time hiking, first time camping. It's 
it's kind of hard. <laughs> so that's the reason why we literally wanted to do something hard. And if you've been watching my channel, I'm, you know my statement, my sentence is do the hard work when you don't feel like it. Well, the benefit of doing the hard work when you don't feel like it is because it makes it 10 times easier to do the hard work when you kind of feel like it. So we've just been wild camping through a thunderstorm, which means that the next time we plan to go, if it's not a thunderstorm, it'll feel so much easier relatively because we've got to experience something harder. And that was my exact reasoning for this thunderstorm camping. It was because this was the first time we've ever been camping in our adult lives. And I thought if we can make this as hard and as uncomfortable as possible, then any experience past this, any time we go camping will be easier. Like we've just been wild camping in a thunderstorm so we can go wild camping when it's sunny and we'll be able to be a lot more grateful for that. It's just another experience. And actually that's something that this was Bew's mentality was that it's all an experience either way. And respect to him, that's a fantastic mentality. It's all an experience either way. The, the wind, the cold, the, the frostbite, <laughs> the trench foot that we got. It's just all another experience to, to add to the book that is your, your memories. And maybe this is weird, maybe this is not making sense to anyone but at least if you're anything like me then it should resonate with you at least slightly this is something this is quite outgoing and we meant to do this a while ago i think if you've ever considered camping you would feel the same where you've wanted to go camping you wanted to do something risk-taking and challenging for a while but then you just for whatever reason you just kept on pushing off the date you never bought the stuff you never planned it you never bought the train tickets you just kept on pushing it back and back and then you realize that you plan to go camping a year ago or months ago same thing with us we wanted to go a while ago and week by week month by month we just kept on delaying it until we were getting closer and closer started buying our things and we delayed it for like another month until i told Bew to stop being a little bitch and to let's book the train tickets right now and we did so we bought them and he thanked me for that as well i think during this experience i did solidify this kind of brotherhood friendship that we have because I had to bring him up at a point that he didn't feel right and you know he was like hesitating to book the tickets because it is just a big thing to do to go on a trip like this and later on I'll explain how he brought me up as well and that really changed the entire trip for me. So we bought the tickets, we got there and uh, well I got there an hour earlier and so I just killed time for a bit and I met this couple there who were really really nice people and you know what this trip made me so social. I, I am quite a social, confident person, but just being outdoors in nature just makes me just talk to people. And so I was literally having conversations with so many people. I met this couple who had just been camping in the same spot. They gave me some tips and tricks, gave me a location pinpoint on my maps where to go to and everything. They were very nice people. Bew comes along, his train was an hour later than mine, so he comes along and we're setting off. Yeah, it, the weather was actually not too bad. It was raining, but it was like completely fine. It wasn't anything bad. And it, honestly, it was really nice already. This was maybe an hour in and just being with someone and being able to conversate about things and being in the type of vibe where you're not gonna have your phones out, you don't have a screen in front of you is so refreshing. I, I'm tired of having conversations with people who are just thinking about their phone and thinking about the screen and how many likes they get on Instagram and what's the point? Like you're not, at that point, you're, it's like not you're not even talking to a real person. If they're not mindful of the conversation with you, then it's kind of like they're not even with you. And this is this conversation, this wild camping trip was a point when we were very mindful. You had to be mindful to experience this stuff. If me and if me and Bew weren't mindful for a second or two, like we would have lost track and we would have messed up our tent and whatever. So being outdoors in nature and doing something challenging is it puts you in a state of flow. And at this point, the most challenging thing was just going for probably a mile hike so far at an incline as well. So it was kind of tiring. But even that, it felt like we were in a state of flow. I don't feel, at least for me, I, I didn't really ask you about this, but at least for all of this time, I wasn't deep in thought, like at all, which is kind of weird for me because I am a guy who is deep in thought a lot of the times, but during this hike, at least towards the way there, I was in a state of flow. I was already like just in mindful of life. And I feel like Bew was the same because we were literally just conversating about 
deep topics, self-improvement and the things just that we wanted to accomplish in our lives and debating things. And it was actually like being able to speak unfiltered with someone and again, without screens in front of you, no distractions. I feel like those deep conversations genuinely add purpose and value to your life. And obviously they strengthen your relationships with people, which also adds value. So the discomfort's already begun. And so far, like we're actually encouraging it. I kept on saying like, I wanted it to rain more and all this, and I probably regretted that later on. <laughs> but uh, we're going up this massive steep road we get kind of lost, we're not really too sure where to go. And so we speak to this family who disapproved of us. They seemed very traditional. And I don't think they like had ever spoken to brown people before. And uh, they just looked like they disapproved of us. The woman was like, you're not wild camping, are you boys? Make sure you take your litter with you. I was like, yeah, we are just, I will. But we asked for directions anyway, they they showed us the way and we climbed over the fence. So obviously we just, I think it was technically trespassing or, it's te this is illegal by the way, if you haven't, if you don't really know much about wild camping, it is illegal, you're camping on someone's land. Uh, it's not usually a problem. I've heard from people that it's not a problem, the farmer will just come up and tell you to leave the land and if you don't argue then it's fine. Then no one even came to us at all. So. So we've climbed over like this wood turnstile, I think that's what it's called, and we're just going up this massive hill. There's loads of sheep around us. And I'll play the clip right now from our first break. You're not wild camping, are you boys? <laughs> I'm trying carb killer birthday cake. It's the first time I've ever bought a full price protein bar. I usually only buy them if I see them for like cheap. So it's like, it looks pretty dang actually. That's it, you tell him. Have a taste of it. Yeah. Oh, nice. Didn't expect it to be that colour. What's your reviews? The flavour's pretty good. It's like, it's definitely got the protein bar texture, you know, it's just thick. Yeah. <laughs> it to be like creamy, but it's just like a brick. Yeah, nice. So this was probably after, probably close to like, one and a half hours of walking, of hiking up an incline as well. So it was kind of similar to being on a treadmill where you turn up the incline to get 15% altitude and tasted some protein powder. At this point, I, I needed a shit, so I just went and I got to experience having a poop in, in nature, which was, do you know what I mean? It's just an, another experience. It was uncomfortable, it was challenging, but like, it's just a memory that I get to hold. It's an experience that I got to have, which I'm actually grateful for, even though that's weird to be grateful for having a poop on a hill, but. <laughs> we go up and I feel like, I don't know if it was missed or if we were literally so high that we were in the clouds because you just, you couldn't see more than 20 meters ahead of you. And at one point there were some steep drops and so now I'm going to play the clip. We got to the end of the earth. The edge of the earth. Point is at me. It's already recording. <clears throat> Alright. So, another update. We're at the edge of the earth. So, if you're going to jump first, <laughs> and then I'll follow. It actually looks like just. Yeah, definitely. Point up there. I ain't got a parachute, mate. Right? Yeah. Boys in the wild. Got to the end of the earth. We were hungry, so we found this like weird rock shelter, like this old castle. It wasn't a castle, but like we'll just say it was a castle. <laughs> and uh, started cooking up. Now, my I plan to just not really eat much. Just. I had protein bars and stuff. My friend Bu, like, he came like with a mini kitchen with him. He had the stove, he had the pan, he had meat, he had seasoning and everything. Good man, we ate good, I'm not gonna lie. We actually ate very, very good on this trip and the food that he brought, he cooked up. I'm so grateful for it. That, again, another experience, it was it was challenging. It, I don't know how he managed to like cook this at, you know, so high up, it was raining, it was windy. He cooked it up, perfect meal. It was, it warmed us up to the bone. Straight after we started eating it, it got really misty, it got really like windy, really windy, really rainy. And But we got some really good pictures and videos on top of the cliff edge. So it's time to set up our tent. Now the real camping begins. And it was difficult. The brochure, the 
camping tent uh, manual said it would take seven minutes. It took us like 40. <laughs> So I did have like a time-lapse thing going on and it was literally so hard to do in this place that we set up So we had to like move the tent somewhere else and try again and it took We set up my one first and as soon as we opened it It was just wet inside and the back of it just fell down So obviously we both had two we both had a tent We set up my one first and it just didn't really set it up right and it just leaked straight away the back of it fell down and so we just pretty much cuddled in his one. <laughs> we shared his tent and honestly, we're like, we're putting up his tent right now. And this was the most uncomfortable moment of my entire life. We put up his tent and it rain is like I've never had before. It, I was chilled to the bone. <laughs> right. That was the most uncomfortable thing I've ever experienced in my life. We are literally drenched. I think I've got hypothermia. Um, the shoes are wet. Like my shoes are literally <laughs> like, right. At least the, the one good thing is that I'm fucking shredded at least. Jeez. <laughs> Wait, should we put these in a bag or anything? Or? Uh, it's already wet. Yeah, just put them in a bag if you can. Yeah, that'll do. Shoes like right here or something. Look at sheep though. They're, they're even getting shelter as well. We were literally soaking wet. I started panicking a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'll be completely honest, I started panicking. My my tent had just fallen down. It's probably about half seven, half eight, something like that. It was starting to get a little bit dark. It would be dark in half an hour. And we're setting up my friend's tent now. And I was thinking like, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be this weather. It's gonna be thunderstorming um, all night. It's gonna be windy all night. It's like 50 mile an hour winds. If his tent doesn't get up, if we don't set up his tent right and it blows off or it falls down, we're literally gonna be left in the middle of the night like this pitch black in the countryside with no one to hear our screams apart from the sheep. <laughs> And so I started panicking. I told my friend like, oh, this is actually too much. I'm actually so uncomfortable. I want to go home. If we pack up everything right now, we, we go back the way we came. We'll be able to get to like a somewhat safe, um, you know, like part, but before it gets like fully dark. So we'd be able to like go for maybe find some like bed and breakfast, some hotel or something. He's actually considering it as well. Like we were, we were like cold, wet, uncomfortable, maximum uncomfort, maximum discomfort, honestly. And, but he powers through and he tells me like, stop being a little pussy, like we're gonna do this, we're gonna, it's gonna be fine, we're gonna set it up. And I'm like slapping myself, giving, giving me like some motivation. Set up his tent and I can't even, oh, me describing it now doesn't do it justice and me even showing you the videos doesn't do it justice when you're feeling that because I can like, I can feel the pain. <laughs> I can feel the discomfort that I had and it's only two days later now that I'm making this video, but I actually really think I'm gonna hold this memory, this discomfort for a long time because that's made me so grateful and so appreciative of the things that I have. I have a roof over my head right now. Like, and I know that's a, a normal saying, like, oh, you have a roof over your head, but I, I genuinely have a roof over my head and I didn't on this night. And not having it for that night was painful. It was like a suffering, it caused me suffering. And now that I have a roof over my head, I can't feel the wind in this room. I'm grateful for that. I wasn't, this is, isn't something I even considered to be grateful for two days ago. And I really do hope I'm gonna keep this kind of like grateful, appreciative mentality for a while. Eventually, okay, we, we zip up his tent. We're actually like decent. I took this video then. Yo, all right. We're sharing a tent. Can't even see the fucking recording. It ain't. The camera is so bad, like I think it's I think it's fucked, bro. I wanted to go home like every 30 seconds. <laughs> oh my god. I'll report back in the morning. And there was even more discomfort. My sleeping bag had leaked through a bit, so it wasn't all wet. If it was all wet, I wouldn't have even went on it, but the bottom of it was wet. So I couldn't straighten my legs all night, otherwise 
they would get they would touch the the cold wetness of the bottom of the sleeping bag so i had to sleep all night with my legs bent and i swear i could feel the the cramp in my gluteus medius muscle like so I was kind of mindful, I was like very mindful of the cramp, like I could feel it so perfectly. <laughs> I swear like all of this experience has just re-emphasized the, the, the things I've been improving on, like mindfulness and gratitude, because I was very mindful of that cramp and of my cold feet, my wet feet. At this point, honestly, everything felt cold and wet. We'd grab like a new warm pair of socks, which hadn't been used, they hadn't been wet, and we'd be like, Bro, is this is this wet? Like, I don't know if I can put it on my feet. Like, how do you how do you check if a sock is cold and wet when everything is cold and wet? And if you have cold and wet feet when you go to sleep, like, you pretty much die. Apparently, like, you get trench foot or something. So, how do you check? It was actually even the night was uncomfortable. We went to sleep. Like, we went we laid down, eyes closed at half nine, and I don't think I slept till like one a.m. or something like that. And late in the night, I woke up, there was footsteps outside. And Bu said this as well, we like, he must have thought that I was asleep. I must have thought that he was asleep because we didn't talk to each other, but I heard footsteps. Now it probably was a sheep because there was sheep around us. But what if it wasn't? Like what if someone was just like scoping out the land, just seeing us and they're like plotting something, I don't know, but it probably was the sheep, but it could have been a human as well, so that was kind of uncomfortable as well. So we woke up at five. I would, honestly, all night, all night, I was actually scared. There was such strong winds, like it, it was blowing like crazy. Do you know that sharp gust of wind that you just hear and so much rain? It felt like it was a real possibility for his tent to literally just like blow off, leave us exposed in the middle of the night, pitch black. There's no, there's no like city lights or anything like this. It was pitch black outside. It was pitch black outside and we were like on a cliff that you don't know which step is going to be your last and you just fall off. Um, all night I was thinking that if his tent blows, I genuinely don't know what to do. I, I would cry. If his, te if his tent blows off right now over us, I will genuinely cry and I don't, it's like I wish I was in a game, I wish I was in a video game and I could just log out and not be in real life, you know, switch worlds in the video game because if his tent blows away, there's no shelter there's like a little cliff rock that we can like stand underneath for five hours or so until the sun comes up but it didn't i'm so grateful like i i prayed and i'm so grateful that it didn't and it, we had shelter all night and the rain was heavy to the point that i literally started saying like yo we should just go home like i want to go home to my mom and stuff and the rain died down a bit so we got inside dripping wet we've both got athletes foot now <laughs> <laughs> and then the wind started and i swear to god for like three hours i was sure that uh the tent was going to come down it was just going to like blow off fast <sighs> Oh, it's cold. <laughs> Maximum discomfort. We cooked breakfast, it was freezing cold. All of these videos we're watching now are from the morning. But I mean, the comfort came in places the comfort came from my friend it came from his cooking it came from having a stove and we literally just put our hands next to the stove of like at the frying pan and it just it, it was actually a fantastic experience i'm seeing glimpses of the night that we camped and the morning after fantastic experience and this is what i said because i'm a you know it's two days later the the discomfort is gone we did the hard challenging work and we no longer have to feel the discomfort. All that's left is the comfort. All that's left is the positive reward of having this memory in my head and having the confidence of this night that we accomplished this. We literally did that. Like I, I, I kept on saying it to him. I can't believe this is real. I can't believe we literally just did this. Like I can't believe we're doing this. Like I was saying it like whilst we were there, same thing with him. It was, it felt unreal. But yeah, we came down. We hiked down and there was like midges and everything. The hike down was actually pretty comfortable, even though it like shouldn't have been, but it was just, again, it was being in nature, doing something challenging, which is physically and mentally challenging. 
If you do that with someone, I swear to God, your relationship with them will exceed expectations because as long as you vibe with each other. Now, me and Bu have a very similar self-improvement focus personality. We just want to achieve good things in life. And we've got like experiences and memories that are quite similar. We stopped off at this pub, got like coffees and breakfast and everything. Um, spoke to so many people as well. Like. I feel like being outdoors again, it does it at least puts us or me in a very social open mood. And that's something that staying inside on video games will never do. So this was my most uncomfortable day ever while camping in a thunderstorm. And there's a few lessons learned. First of all, gratitude. I, gratitude is the most important life skill. And yes, it is a skill. I'm repeating my last video, I don't care. It is a skill and you have to level it up and there are ways to level it up. And this is actually very, I just realized this this second right now, I wasn't even planning to say this. It's not just limited to gratitude journaling and writing letters of gratitude because experiencing a uncomfortable, challenging moments like this trip has made me grateful, has definitely improved my gratitude for other things. And that's very interesting, that's actually exciting because I was, I was trying to find new practices to improve gratitude because it seems like it's quite limited to just stating things that you're grateful for on a piece of paper. And now that I think about it, putting yourself into a situation that would make you grateful for your normal life is a practice, is an activity that you can do, you can put into your schedule at, that will literally level up your gratitude. I'm actually, I'm grateful that I just realized this. <laughs> The second lesson that I would take home from this is the value of discomfort, the, the importance of uncomfortability. I understand that might be weird for someone to state this because again, we're, we're living in a very privileged era. Why wouldn't you want to be comfortable? The reason why you wouldn't want to be comfortable all the time is because it leaves you in a state of indifference in action it people who seem to be so comfortable like they just they they don't have any challenges any hardship it seems like they're not achieving anything they're not taking any extra action they they wake up stay in comfort they eat the comfortable foods the, com the comfortable habits the comfortable friends if you're not experiencing discomfort i don't think you're growing i think that's a very very valid statement if you're not experiencing discomfort i like this might not be a fact, but at least I believe you are not growing because straight away I'm, I'm into exercise, I'm into weightlifting and straight away I put that into the weightlifting analogy. If you're starting off weightlifting, if you're not experiencing discomfort, you are not growing, fact. Discomfort and challenge is the things that you will remember. It's, it's after a period of challenge, after a period of uncomfortability that you feel highest. You have to, to go up, you have to have periods of down. This was a very fun experience, even though it wasn't exactly a conventionally fun thing to do. And I think going with someone, going with a friend who is so similar to me has made it 10 times better. So Pew, if you're watching this, I appreciate you. Thank you for coming with me. Thank you for, if you're watching this, if, thank you for watching my video. Um, it's a long video, so everyone else has clicked off now. So now we can just talk real, me and my true fans, the people who haven't clicked off yet. So thank you for bumping up my audience retention, boys. I appreciate that. And honestly, try this. Try wild camping. Try just camping in general. If you're in the UK, wild camping is illegal, but just do it anyway. Just don't. If you're hesitating, if you're like, if you want to do this, if you're watching this video and you're thinking like, that actually looks cool. I wish I was doing it. I kind of wished that I was friends with them too and I, I was there with them. Do it. Don't, don't wait around. This is, it's a trip like this is, a trip like this, an experience like this is something that I can imagine you'd just be waiting around for, like forever before you do it. it. You have to do that hard and comfortable action, which is literally setting the date, booking the train tickets, buying the things from eBay, from Amazon, and literally just go in. You, no one can like motivate you enough. You literally just have to do that action of like looking when the train ticket is, which spot you're gonna go, when the train ticket is, and buying the ticket, that's it. If you're waiting around, you're just not gonna go. But do it, this, 
obviously maybe you know your first time you don't have to do it in such an uncomfortable way like going in a thunderstorm but strive for strive to purposely go when it's like raining and windy in my opinion because you'll have the same benefits that i did where yeah you could go when it's pleasant but the thing is when it's pleasant it's still going to be uncomfortable when it's pleasant and you know sunny and warm you're still going to be uncomfortable you're still going to be tired you're still going to take a lot of effort to get there it's still going to be a challenge but it's going to be a lot less of a challenge than if you go when it's hard and if you go when it's hard it's going to have a lot bigger benefit i'm excited for the next one we only went for one night and i told my friend that this is something i want to do like monthly and stop going to different places around the uk do like road trips when we learn how to drive take monthly trips because i feel like this is it's such a masculine what's the word like traditional hobby that I, I, i'm sure it's just good for you i'm sure like camping being in nature fishing it's just a, such a masculine thing to do to challenge yourself and i know for a fact this is like it is rewarding I've, i came back and slept so nicely and i'm so grateful for this experience that i can't wait for the next one so that's my video my explanation on why we went wild camping in a thunderstorm why i prefer to strive for maximum discomfort because it leads to greater rewards and i like me some rewards so right if you watch this far you know the deal i'm grateful for you thank you for the support we're almost at 500 subscribers so if you haven't already smash that subscribe button smash that like button and a great comment oh god what the youtuber said i rate comment and subscribe smash that like button and the the bell icon it really helps me a lot <laughs> Nah, but do it though. Do it though. Subscribe to me right now. Saw me out and take care.